Have you ever wished that you could add an open Google Maps function into your app? I know the simplest, most straightforward and effortless way to do so. It takes less than 10 minutes in total, so let me show you how right now. Alright, so first let's take a look at the Google Maps platform documentation over here. As you can see, there are four main types of map URLs that the Google Maps platform provides. Namely, the search, directions, display a map and display a street view paranormal. And the one that we are concerned with today is the directions one, which requests directions and launches Google Maps with the result. So if we scroll down over here, we can go down over to the directions map URL. And it says over here that the directions action displays the path between two or more specified points on the map, as well as the distance and travel time. And for formatting of the directions URL, we need to form this URL API over here. So this first part over here, this will be a set URL path, which we will not change. So this part, the first part will always be the same. And what we have to pass are the parameters over here. So going down over here, we can see that there are multiple parameters that we can pass. Firstly is the origin, which is basically the place that we are starting from. Do note that the origin parameter is actually a nullable parameter. It's an optional parameter. If you don't pass the origin parameter, it will simply take your current location. Next is the destination parameter, and this destination parameter is important since it tells us which place we want to go to. There are also other optional parameters over here, which are the travel mode, which is basically our method of travel. And these are the three main parameters that we'll be making use of today. The origin, destination, as well as the travel mode parameters over here. And one important thing to note as well is that the origin as well as the destination parameters have to be converted to URL encoded strings, such as this example over here, as well as this example over here. So they have to be URL encoded, but don't worry, it may sound complicated, but Flutterflow has a very simple function that we can make use of. So moving back into our Flutterflow app, you can see that I've already set up a base app over here with text fields for the origin, destination, as well as the drop down for the transport mode over here. And when we click on this button, it'll create the API link based on the documentation over here. So this link over here. Let's see how we can create the API link from our text fields and drop down over here. All right, so first we have to create the custom function in order to encode our strings into the format of URL encoded strings that the Google Maps platform API requires. So going back into our Flutterflow project, we can go over to custom code and you can see that I've already included a function, a custom function over here called encode string in order to encode the strings. So what it takes in is that it takes in a single argument of URI over here. And this argument is of type string. And over here, this is the function over here. It checks if the URI, URI is not null. And if it's not null, it just encodes the string using this line of code over here and returns the encoded string. Else, if it is null, then it just returns a null value. So this is a very simple function that you can find linked in the description below. Going back to our Flutterflow widget tree. So now we'll click on the Create API Link button and we'll open the Action Flow Editor and we have to add a new action, which is to set the, our page state. And you want to set our Google Maps link page state. We want to set the value to a new maps URL with our three parameters of destination, origin, as well as travel mode. So for this value to set, we have to use a custom code expression over here and we have to take in three arguments. The first argument will be our origin, and it will be of type string. Our second argument will be our destination. And lastly, our third argument will be our travel mode. And all of this will be nullable. So for the origin as well as the destination arguments, 
just like I mentioned earlier, they have to be URL encoded strings. So we have to make use of our custom function to encode our strings. So for the value, we have to choose our custom function and we'll choose the encode string custom function. And over here, we'll just simply pass our widget state and the text field one origin text field. And then we'll close this, confirm. So this just returns the encoded string. And we do the same thing for our destination argument. So we have to click on our custom function and our encode string custom function. And we'll pass our widget state destination text field. For our travel mode, it does not have to be URL encoded, so we can just simply go to the widget state and we'll pass our drop down value. So for the code expression now, we'll just type in, we'll just go to our Google Maps platform documentation and we'll copy the first part of this URL. And we'll paste it in a string. And next, we have to add an and percent sign. And now let's pass in our origin destination as well as travel mode. So we'll type in origin is equal to and now to pass in our origin argument we have to type in dollar sign and then origin next we'll pass we'll type in another n percent sign and we'll pass in the destination equal sign and then to pass in the destination argument it will be dollar sign destination lastly we'll be passing in our travel mode so it'll be n percent sign once more and then it'll be travel underscore mode is equal to dollar sign travel capital M O D E. We can check for errors. Oh sorry, there is no underscore over here. So we check for errors once more. Make sure that the URL is exactly the same as this. So now we can confirm. And now whenever we tap on this button, it will update this page state to be our newly formatted Google Maps link. Now we can close this. And now in this button over here, and now we want to allow this button, whenever the user taps on this button, to actually open the Google Maps URL. So we can open the action flow editor. And for this action, it will be URL. And it will be the launch URL action. For our URL value type, we want to be it from a variable. And for this variable, it will just simply be our page state, the Google Maps link. And that's it. It's that simple to launch Google Maps from your Floodflow apps. Now, instead of specifying the name of the place of the destination, you can also give it coordinates such as the latitude as well as the longitude. You can follow all the above steps. They are all the same and all that changes is the Maps URL link. So in the Create API Link button, all that changes is the expression. So if you use latitude and longitude, you just have to give it the latitude longitude argument in this custom code expression. And this expression over here, instead of specifying the destination to be the place, it will just simply be the latitude comma longitude arguments over here. So that's all that changes if you'd like to use latitude and longitude instead. Alright, so now that we're done, we can try testing out our app to see if it works. Oh, and one more thing for the travel mode parameter in our maps URL. You can see that in the documentation over here, the travel mode can be some options such as driving, walking, bicycling, transit. And if no travel mode is specified, Google Maps will just show one or more of the most relevant modes for the specified route. You can further read the Google Maps platform documentation as there's a lot more stuff that wasn't covered in the video but may be useful to your app as well. So I'll be linking this in the link down below. Alright, so Tesma has just loaded up. Let's see what happens if I try to search for a place. So for the origin, I'll type in Marina Bay Sands. And for the destination, I'll type in 
Universal Studios Sentosa. And for the transport mode, let's just give it driving. We can create our API link, and this is our API link that has been generated for us. And let's try opening Google Maps. You can see that it automatically opened Google Maps in a new tab, and it shows the exact directions of how to get from your origin location to your destination location. Now let's see what happens if you leave the origin field blank, and we create the API just like that. So now if we do this, you can see that it just takes our current location instead and destination remains the same, but it still shows us how to get to our destination exactly. Let's also test out our latitude and longitude way of de defining our destination. So over here, I have the latitude as well as the longitude values for Universal Studios Sentosa. And if we copy and paste that into our text fields over here, and if we leave the transport mode blank and we create a new API link, you can see that now the destination parameters includes the latitude as well as the longitude. And let's see if we open map, open Google Maps one last time. You can see that it does indeed lead us to Universal Studios Singapore, showing that we can also use latitude and longitude to define the destination. Alright, so that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about how we can use APIs in our Flutterflow apps, check out this video over here. You don't want to miss it. Alright, thank you and goodbye.